What's up everybody, Average Joe here. Today's video is hopefully gonna be pretty short and we're gonna be answering one of the most common questions that I get on this channel is, how did I connect or wire my 12,000 watt split phase grow watt inverter to my house or to my main panel, sub panel, so I can power it off grid and use the grid as a backup. So before we get started, I'm gonna to try to make this video short and sweet and to the point so I don't waste too much of your time. Uh, just a quick note, I'm not a licensed electrician or anything like that, so if you're not comfortable with you know, electricity and all that kind of stuff, you should definitely contact your local, you know, your local electricians. All right, with that out of the way, let's head over to the main panel and the sub panel. All right, so back here where my electrical panels are at, this is the main electrical panel and this is the sub panel or the critical loads panel. I pretty much run everything in my entire house off of this panel right over here, except for my stove, air conditioning, and dryer. Those three items and a few other little tiny things are still ran off of the grid or the main panel right over here. The only reason I don't run the stove, air conditioning, and dryer off of the inverter or off grid is because honestly i really don't have enough solar or battery capacity to continue the cycle every single day if we get some clouds all right i just don't have enough solar for the most part to keep the cycle going i've tried it i can really only do it if we have sun every single day so since we don't have sun every single day I move those items back over here. Once I get more solar, you know, I'll put those things back on this panel. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of how everything is wired normally without the inverter, and then I will show you the inverter wiring, okay? So uh, power comes in from the utility through these two lugs right here, powers this panel as it normally would, and then to power the sub panel right over here, we're coming off of a double pole circuit breaker right here we're coming out and we're using number six wire or six awg wire all right so we got two hots and a white neutral right down there and then a green ground right over here all right all four of those wires go up through this piece of conduit right over here and then you can see them coming out and we're coming in the top and we're going to be powering these two lugs right over here on the top just like we are right over here from the grid so we have two hots and a neutral, and then the ground is right over here, okay? And that powers this whole panel normally without an inverter. All right, and then one other thing I also gotta mention is the main panel has a ground and neutral bond in it, and then the sub panel does not, all right? Now, the easiest way to tell for a regular person, typically, is there's a green screw right up here in the top, and that bonds your ground and your neutral together. Over here in the sub panel or any other panel in the rest of your house, they should be, or they have to be separated, all right? The green screw up here is removed, and actually for this panel, it's not even installed. You can see it right over here. For your sub panel or your critical loads panel or any other panel in your house, those have to be separated, all right? So right over here, you can see I've got a separate ground bar from the neutral. Over here, they're bonded, okay? All right, so now we're gonna move on to the inverter wiring, okay? So we're gonna be going over here to the main panel because this is gonna be supplying power to the inverter, okay? All right, so right over here, I have a double pole 60 amp circuit breaker, even though the manual calls for an 80 amp circuit breaker. The only reason I kind of chose a 60 amp circuit breaker is because for one, I'm using number six wire, and number two, I'm not trying to power my stove, air conditioning, and dryer along with everything else. So I'm not using the full 12,000 watts from the inverter, okay? If you plan on using the full 12,000 watts from the inverter, you're probably gonna wanna use an 80 amp circuit breaker right over here to supply the inverter, okay? So anyway, like I said, I've got a 60 amp double pole circuit breaker right over here. I'm coming out and I'm using two number six wires for my hots, all right? I've got a red and a black. And I also have a green ground, and that is a number 10. I probably could have used a number six, but I didn't, I just used a number 10. All right, so anyway, those three wires go over this way and then go up, and they exit out of this panel through some three quarter inch PVC conduit right up here. 
and then it goes over to the inverter, which I'll show you right now. All right, and then back here at the inverter, we're gonna come down through this piece of three quarter inch conduit right here. This is the AC input. We come down, we follow that around. All right, and we come down to the bottom of the inverter out of this three quarter inch PVC conduit right here. You can see my green, black, and red. You follow those over and you go to the AC input right over here. All right, so there's my red, black, and green on the input, okay? And then for the AC output, it's pretty much the same thing. Instead of a ground, we have a neutral because this inverter creates a neutral from the big transformer inside. So anyway, we have two hots and one neutral. These again are number six wires, and then they exit through the bottom three quarter inch PVC conduit. And just for gee whiz information, these do have input and output circuit breakers, all right? So the input is a 80 amp double pole circuit breaker. And then for the output, it's got two separate 63 amp circuit breakers right here. And one other quick note, if you're not aware, this does have a little tiny cover on it. It basically just covers the terminals. If you wanted to make it a little more uh, code compliant, you would probably install a, an actual box right here so conduit can attach to it. So anyway, there you go. Uh, we're gonna exit out of the bottom PVC three quarter inch conduit and go up and head over to the sub panel. All right, and then back over here to the panels. This time we're gonna be going into the sub panel or the critical loads panel because that's everything we wanna power. So we come in through the three quarter inch conduit right up here. You can see we've got a black, red, and a white. So our two hots and our neutral, and those come down and then go into a 60 amp double pole circuit breaker right here, all right? And if you take a look behind the two hots that are attached to the circuit breaker, I attach the white neutral to the neutral bus bar right here. And that powers the panel or your entire house. You don't need to run another ground from the inverter because you already have the ground from the input side, all right? You don't have to run a separate ground because the ground, they're already attached through these panels right here, all right? The only thing that's different about this panel right here, since we can technically power it from two different sources, you're gonna need to install a generator lockout, and that prevents you from powering this panel from two different sources. Remember, like I said before, the normal house wiring is we're using a double pole circuit breaker right here, and we're coming into the top to power the panel. Only this time, we have this shut off, and we have the inverter circuit breaker turned on, okay? Also with the generator lockout, you have to attach this little cover right here. Basically, there's a little warning and danger on here. It says interlock breaker, do not turn on when cover is removed, even though mine is turned on. Uh, basically, whenever you put the cover back on, here's your lockout, all right? This slides up and down, and it basically only allows you to use one of those circuit breakers at a time, all right? So if you're gonna be back feeding a panel, you should use or you have to use a generator lockout. Another quick little thing, everybody asked me what this is right here. This is just a home line surge breaker. It's just a surge suppressor for this whole panel right here. You can get these you know, on Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever you want. This is just a whole home surge suppressor. All right, there you go. That's pretty much it. I guess if you guys have other inverters, you could probably do pretty much the exact same thing that I did, as long as the inverter is 240 volts, you know, split phase. All right, well, there you go. That's pretty much it. That's how I did it. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, I would love to hear those in the comment section. Uh, don't forget to like that smash button, and I will see you on the next an under um, uh, there is some other ways that you could do this if you only have 120 volts um, I'm not telling you what you can and can't do but um, you can technically wire 